What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Two Wheeled Rider YouTube channel. My name is Mario Orsini. In today's video, I'm going to show you the bike that we actually raced in the longest point-to-point off-road race in the United States, the 2023 Vegas Torino. I'm gonna to show you everything we did to this bike to get it ready, modifications we made, all those sorts of things. So uh, let's check it out. So I want to get into a little bit of backstory on this bike before I show you all the modifications and things we did to it. Originally the deal was it was John Ross's bike. He knew we wanted to go race this race he, and this thing needed an, an engine rebuild. He said, hey, you pay for the parts, go race it, put the 500 and some miles on it, give it back to me when you guys get done. That's what we were going to do. And then on the way back from the race, he offered to sell it to me. So um, this is my bike now and we'll talk about what we're going to do with it later. But now let's jump into uh, all the stuff we did to get it ready to race for uh, Vegas Torino. So one thing we did, in, and I'm not going to jump into all this, but you guys saw the pictures in, in the original video. It had a total engine rebuild, top, bottom, everything. In fact, if we take a look at the uh, computer up here, you'll see it's got 527 miles on it. That's how many miles this engine has on it since it's total rebuild. Nothing really uh, crazy done during the rebuild. It was just uh, needed a fresh engine. So um, that was the first thing we did. So I guess I should start off by saying this is a 2018 KTM 500 EXC. And one of the first things people are gonna notice is this bracket here on the front. This was to hold a, a Racing Tracks transponder, which did a couple of things. One, it allowed the, the live scoring, live timing, that sort of thing. And two, it was also a safety device. Uh, so when we got close to the end there, when Dave was on the bike and trophy truck gets behind you or buggy, but in this case it was a trophy truck, they can hit a button and it sends a really loud signal, really loud noise uh, to this to let Dave know there was someone behind him and he doesn't want to get run over so he can move over to the side. Uh, something else you'll probably notice if you're familiar with the 500s is we've changed all the plastic out. Now, for the most part, the plastic's the same, whether it's moto style or, uh, or dual sport style. But you'll notice we have a number plate here. We did not run a headlight. If we take a look at the back of the bike, tail light's been removed. In fact, all of the lights were removed, headlight, tail light, horn, any of that stuff for a few reasons. One, it's all added weight. Two, we didn't need it. We were pretty confident we were gonna finish within the time frame we needed to be done before dark. And it's, it's an off-road race, so you don't need turn signals and, and those sorts of things. So that was a couple of things we did to, uh, to lighten the, uh, the weight on the bike a little bit. So I think just staying up top here for a second, you'll see uh, Enduro Engineering is a big sponsor. Uh, in fact, all the protective equipment pretty much on here was provided by them. So huge shout out to those guys. Uh, we did decide to run uh, Enduro Engineering Bark Busters on here, complete with their flags. We did have a couple of offs. We didn't have to worry about broken levers or, or perches or anything like that. So it was nice to have that on here. Also, we do have a uh, Scott steering stabilizer on here. This is a mount kit that I already had. I've got a few of these stabilizers uh, laying around. So we went ahead and put those on for the rocky sections. Uh, actually came in uh, really handy. Something else we have up here is an onboard computer. I actually stole this off my uh, Husqvarna FE 350. It worked great, gave us an odometer uh, to, and speedometer to kind of track things along the way. So that was a really nice thing to have on here. Staying up here on the handlebar, uh, you'll see we simplified the switches. We simply went with a start button and a kill switch. That's it. Uh, we did that for a few reasons. One, to simplify the wiring harness, and, and two, just less stuff to break. Uh, so we just made it real simple. This is also a, a setup we're very, very familiar with, having raced dirt bikes on the East Coast. Uh, we normally just have the start button and kill button, so that's what we decided to do on this thing to, uh, to limit failure points. So another thing you probably noticed when you first take a look at this bike, you got a bigger fuel tank on it. This is an Achirbys 3.1 gallon. A little less than a, than a gallon more than what the factory tank comes on, but it came in real handy uh, because we needed it for fuel mileage purposes or fuel range purposes. Additionally, they do make a larger one. We didn't feel like we needed it. We were right. We didn't need it. And really all it was going to do was add on extra weight, which we really didn't want for, uh, for racing. On the inside of the tank, we did go with a brand new fuel pump. I believe we use a, a quantum fuel pump, just like I use in my 1290. I mean, different pumps, but, but same brand. But we did put a new fuel pump in here. Up here on the radiator, we'll get a close-up of it. 
typically would never run something like this. We normally just run plastic guards because they allow better airflow than the metal. But because we were gonna be at high speeds all day and there was a chance we were gonna crash, which we did, uh, we went with the metal uh, guards up front. I don't know that I'll actually keep those on here, but it was good for racing in the desert. All right, so before we go any further, huge shout out to the guys over at Decal Works for the sick graphics kit. Uh, appreciate Sean and the guys over there. I always keep the bikes looking awesome. So um, back on to some of the protective equipment. We went with the Enduro Engineering, the big uh, metal skid plate, which is a good thing. There's a lot of rocks out there in the desert. And I had this skid plate off uh, shortly after we got home because I did a valve adjustment and oil change on the bike. And you can see where it took some pretty big dings uh, protecting the engine. So a uh, huge shout out to Enduro Engineering. We also have the slave cylinder chain guide on here. A little tricky to put on once we had it on. Everything worked awesome. Uh, John ran a little bit different uh, grounding system here for the battery, which is a little bit more robust. These pegs are not the actual pegs we ran. I did, uh, we, we basically stole the uh, Fastway EXT pegs off of my 350, so I'll show you what those look like. Just gave us a little bit more footing area for, for the long distances we were gonna be riding. But I uh, threw these back on. Uh, everything else, I haven't really touched the bike. Uh, threw the springs I needed back into the front forks because I'm lighter than the other guys. But other than that, the way the bike sits is basically the way it came back from uh, the race. So uh, let's work our way back, show you a few more things. All right, so if we take a look back here on, on the uh, drivetrain, we went a 48 rear sprocket, 14 front. Obviously, you know, you got a sealed chain on here. And then uh, TM Design Works chain guide. This just happened to be on the bike. You can tell it's not new, but uh, it worked just fine. All right, so as we work our way around to the back of the bike, you see we just got the factory exhaust on here, nothing special here. We ran uh, the Dunlop AT81, <laughs> I'll give you a close up. Uh, this is a brand new tire when the race started and you can see what it looks like now. If we were to run this race again uh, next year, I think we'll do a, a, a whole wheel change because and we'll get a little close up down here. Andrew, I'm not blaming anyone, I'm pretty sure it was him roached this uh, rear brake rotor during the course of his uh, 105 mile stretch. But um, hey, everything held up just fine. But um, the one thing was a little bit different, I've never ran, I think the other guys have, they've run mooses before. And if you don't know what a moose is, I'll show you. It's basically a foam insert. Um, so we ran mooses front and rear on the bike. And the main reason was no chance of flat. You, you can't get a flat tire with a moose in it. It is a little bit different feel, but, uh, <laughs> Hell, the whole thing was a different feel. I'd never ridden the bike prior to the race. I'd never ridden uh, mooses prior to the race. I'd never ridden in the desert, at, at least on a dirt bike like this prior to the race. So everything was new, so it took a little bit of time to get used to, but uh, all worked out. Another thing that's a little bit different, uh, every dirt bike, for the most part I've owned, has linkage. This is PDS. Uh, obviously, the front and rear suspension uh, was all gone over. It was all refreshed before uh, we, we went out. To, uh, to hit up the, uh, to, for the race. Also, as we work our way forward here, just a couple other little things. We have the Enduro Engineering uh, large brake tip on the front, or on, for, uh, I say on the front, for your front toes for the, for the rear brake. Uh, we had a different oil cap one here. It was some sort of anodized one. We kind of chewed the hell out of it, so I replaced it with this one. And um, I don't know, we got a couple other little things, and, and that's about it, so let me show you the last few things. All right, so about the only other thing left to show you is we did put an aftermarket seat on it. This is an Enduro Engineering uh, tall seat. Obviously, I didn't really need it because I'm not that tall, but it does provide some extra cushioning, and we did have some taller guys on the team, so a really comfy seat. Uh, handlebar, I didn't really talk about because it's stock. The grips are just ODI lock-ons, and, and that's it. I mean, for the most part, it's a fairly stock bike. Suspension had been uh, revalved on it. Obviously, you know, it had a fresh engine rebuild, and some components freshened and some protective equipment put on it. And that's about it. It was good enough to uh, get us a third place finish in the uh, amateur open motorcycle class. So I know all of us are really stoked about that. Still waiting on our trophy to arrive. I don't know what the hell's going on with that. But um, anyway, if you're expecting like some sort of like really trick stuff, not necessarily the case with this bike. It's, it's pretty standard stuff. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, considering that subscribe button because if you like motorcycles, well, this is the place to be. If you have any questions about this bike, maybe something I glossed over, I could have missed something. Let me know down in the comment section below. And like I said, I bought the bike, it's not going anywhere. So sometime this winter, it's gonna get converted to, I don't know what we're gonna call it, dual sport, adventure mode. We'll see. So um, 
As always, talk to you guys again soon.